Hello everybody, this is the GoTo family. Today we're in Singapore. This city is beautiful. We just made our way here yesterday and it's amazing. Now today we're in Chinatown, the Singapore Chinatown right now. So we're gonna make our way through Chinatown and just do a bit of shopping here. Later on we're gonna make our way to the Maxwell Hawker Center and we're also gonna check out some cool things along the way. They grow their own durians right here in Singapore. The durians are Musan King. So widely considered, at least by people that know what they're talking about, to be the best durians in the world. These are their durians right here. So we can see the price, one kilo for $25. So uh, durian, definitely a treat. Wow, guys, the smell of durian is so overwhelming in here. It's crazy. This is the most durian smelling place I've ever been to and <laughs> I think this place is like the jackpot they make literally everything durian and if you love durian smell you will feel like you're in paradise right here I almost feel like a cambri <laughs> it's just <laughs> durian strudel they got it all they have a durian menu everything durian charcoal pizza I've never seen a place that is as crazy about durian as this Oh look, we got some durian mochi right here. I'm taking it first. All right. Thank you. I really take the durian. Big. I'll I'll fit a durian. Let, let's see. It has a big, thick durian paste in the middle. Oh my god. All right, so there we have the durian mochi guys. So this is a nice it's nice and uh, it's kind of plump has a nice little squeeze to it. it It feels quite soft and it has a huge huge uh, clump or uh, just a, a mass of, of durian paste in the middle. So this is the real deal This is not like processed durian <laughs> All right guys Let's do this. This is a one biter, but I think I'm gonna go for a half bite just to kind of get used to the uh, potency of this durian paste inside. Is it a thumbs up? Or is it a thumbs down? The aftertaste? Really? Is it good? That is extreme, guys. That is an extreme piece of durian mochi right there. That's the real deal. I honestly don't know if I want to have more. I feel like I got my dream fixed for, for a while. Um, that is just really strong, really potent. Um, it's everything I, I would say if you're a durian lover, you'll want in a durian. It's uh, definitely an acquired taste. Well, to me, you know, it depends on the day. It depends on which side of the bed I wake up on. Sometimes durian can taste like just the most beautiful pineapple mango combination. Sometimes it can taste like the worst combination of rotten garbage and uh, rotten onions all mixed together. So today it's probably more on this side for some reason, but um, tomorrow I could be on the other side. But I give myself props for keeping that down. I took a huge bite, took a, almost that whole mochi. I'm gonna have that aftertaste for a while. I might have some. I might need something to wash it down. Really excited. It's because they look good. They don't know what's coming. You want durian it's mochi? Durian. That's it. That's it. Hey, Dad. It has a very thick durian paste. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> they want it, but then they're not sure. Okay. No. It's good you tried it, though. They kind of like can't eat the one. And that's the one I got that for Dad. And they want the durian again. Actually, they want the mochi because they love mochis, but they're kind of not into the mo durian aspect of this mochi. So here you go. It could be worse. I love it. There's nothing that has a bad taste. 
You know, it kind of reminds me of fried onions. But it not the worst thing I've ever tasted. You really gotta taste it for yourself. Alright guys, so our day took a bit of an unexpected turn. I was not expecting to start my day off on a durian foot. Not in the least, but hey, we saw a place that made pizza durian and durian nuggets. We just had to try it. And right now we're making our way to the more busy area of the market right here. Very earthy, and uh, this is anchi. a little different because of the lime skin. Can I smell? Okay. <laughs> it smells a little more um, fragrant, I would say. Well, that smells like chocolate. This Pikachu fan. Oh wow! It's a Pikachu fan. Oh my god. a bit of that durian aftertaste that I've had lingering for some time now. What is this? That is tapioca cake. Tapioca cake, wow. It kind of tastes like apples. Like kind of, it tastes like um, what is it called? Applesauce. But tapioca applesauce. I don't know. It reminds me of applesauce for some reason. And I love the coconut shaped coconut on top. It's really beautiful. Now these sago balls, they just look like gelatinous squares or circles. I'm not exactly sure what it is. And there's also some uh, palm sugar, I believe that is in there as well. It basically just looks like a gelatinous palm sugar kind of treat. Okay, let's try it out. Mm. It actually has an even more kind of like chewy and soft texture than the tapioca. It's, it's kind of like a jello, but with a bit of crunch. It's really quite interesting. It's really delicious, I have to say. And you can kind of tell that there is some sugar in there, so. Quite nice. All right, guys, I'm gonna enjoy this. Let's see what else there is in this market. All right, so in the back of me is the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple, right over there. So it's right in the heart of Chinatown, Singapore. And what's cool about this temple is that Buddha, well, they recovered one of his teeth. So they recovered his left canine tooth, and supposedly it's displayed in there. And that's why the temple is called the Buddha Tooth relic temple which is a really cool name so it's right here in chinatown it's a huge majestic building let's go in let's check it out
this place is absolutely beautiful and I, I don't want to speak too loud because I feel like I'll be disrespectful but this place is just so so nice and it just has like that magical religious feeling that you get in a, when, when you come into a religious building like this tooth is on level four now you can bring a well you can bring a camera but you can't record video or take pictures or anything like that and I totally get that it's a sign of respect so that's totally fine but unfortunately we weren't able to catch a Buddha's tooth on camera today. All right, so next stop is the Maxwell Hawker Center. That's where we're gonna go and have some food. So I believe it's a short walk away from the Chinatown market right here. So uh, I don't know if I'm jaywalking now. Singapore is a country of laws and rules and regulations and fines, a lot of fines from what I hear. So you gotta be careful if you're gonna break the law in this country. All right guys, so when I came to Singapore, I heard a lot about hawker. Hawker food stalls, hawker food centers and all that. So I was thinking, what exactly is a hawker food? I've never heard this term before. So basically it's a very Singaporean centric term and it reflects exactly this kind of place, this kind of food center. And generally it's, um, it's a bit of a combination of uh, like, you know, like the hawker culture, kind of like selling goods, you know, like by hawking it. But it's not really about that here. It's more about the kind of coming together of, uh, you know, all these cuisines from different places, especially in Asia, and also kind of like a mixture of culture as well in the food. So almost like street food, but not quite because it's indoors and uh, it's a bit more like a food mall, but it kind of has a bit of a street food kind of aspect. All right, so our first stop is Tian Tian Hainanese Chicken Rice right here. This is a popular spot in the neighborhood and we're gonna try it out. We got our Hainanese chicken rice. Now Hainanese chicken rice, it looks like a very simple dish really. It's a dish of poached chicken that is served on a bed of uh, flavored rice, fragrant rice, and it comes garnished with uh, just a couple of cucumbers really, and it also comes with a chili sauce. Now on the side you can get two options. Um, I forget what option number one is, but anyways, we got the bok choy with oyster sauce. Really, uh, there is not gonna be any kind of crispiness to this chicken it's gonna be very very much boiled yeah oh yeah you can definitely tell it, it has a little bit of that boiled chicken flavor really if you've ever had a super boiled chicken you know what I'm talking about now it also has the skin boiled chicken generally the skin is a little slimier it's a little more on the slimy side also when you boil chicken I find that it tastes a little gamier as well That is so chickeny, that's unbelievable. Wow, that is so fragrant. It's it's really chickeny. It's one of the most chickeny dishes I've ever had. As you boil the chicken or as you poach it, you really enhance that chicken flavor. And that skin on the outside is actually a little chewy. It's a little crunchy and a little chewy. Uh, a little more than I expected, I have to say. This is my first time having this. It's really good, it's really fragrant. Let's go for another bite. This time let's dip it in a bit of chili sauce. I have to say though that if you're not used to eating chicken boiled, this might be a bit of an acquired taste simply because the chunks of chicken are so big that it can be a little chewy in your mouth. And then you top that off with the boiled chicken. So it could be a bit of an acquired taste. Let's try it with the chili sauce. That chili sauce, wow, that brings this dish up to the next level. Wow, that is amazing, and it's amazing how well it goes with this. So the next thing that we got is an oyster cake from Maxwell Fuzhou, or Fuzhou, I don't know, i probably not pronouncing that right, but. So we got the oyster cake from Maxwell Fuzhou Oyster Cake, right in the back of me. So it just comes wrapped up like that. 
and uh, it's really not very big. It's just a small cake. It looks deep fried. It is deep fried. It's a deep fried oyster cake. All right. So that's it. That's what it looks like. Let's take a bite. So the oyster cake is quite good. It's it's quite oystery, I have to say. There's also some mince meat that they put in there. Uh, I believe there's some beans as well. Uh, there's also some shrimp. There's also some shrimp, and uh, it's quite good. It comes together. It's almost like an omelet on the outside. So uh, kind of like a pastry, and it's kind of holding all the inside, the oyster mixture with the mince meat, the bean. Uh, maybe some green onions in there as well. The shrimps, it's kind of holding it in. There's a nice big oyster. It kind of looks like a mixture in between an eyeball and some kind of a peanut or nut. Now it's quite tasty, I have to say. It's quite good. This is one of the things that, uh, that is really popular and they're like the perfect snack size bite. So you can take these, you can take one, you can take a couple to go, you can eat them now, you can eat them later, you can pass them on to your friends. So this is the perfect little snack. We also got this beautiful laksa soup. Laksa is something they make here very well. So basically laksa, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's kind of like a coconutty soup with these kind of thick noodles that are kind of very reminiscent of udon. Maybe they are, I'm not sure in this particular dish, but they have these uh, big thick noodles, they have these big slices of tofu. Generally you have chicken uh, and shrimp, or just shrimp, or water the other, but uh, generally has shrimp, and it's a nice coconutty broth. It's one of the best dishes in the world, in my opinion. One of the best things you can eat, especially on a budget, and it's always delicious. Now this is like the heartland of laksa, so perfect place to try it. All right, so let's just first try the broth. And we can see that it's nice and creamy. Very nice and creamy. And it has those like little hints of uh, orange and red in there. Spread out. Mmm. Wow, that is very, very coconutty. It's very creamy. Wow. That is very nice. It is quite rich though. It's uh, on the richer side when it comes to laksa. So you can have them a little less creamy, a little less coconutty, or more. This is definitely on the more creamy side. It's just beautiful. You taste a bit of the shrimp in that broth. You taste that, that pickled tofu in there as well. I believe that's what it is. And uh, it's just beautiful. Oh, and it has a bit of coriander, a bit of onion, some bean sprouts, but that coriander, just kind of meshes in so well with that coconut base broth here. Unbelievable. All right guys, so that does it for this video. We hope you guys enjoyed this tour of Singapore of Chinatown as well as the Maxwell Hawker Food Center. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. All right guys, so we'll see you on the next one. Take care.